Growth is very, very silent. Tell somebody growth is silent. I want you to understand that first thing. Growth is silent. The second thing I want you to know is that growth is uncomfortable. Are you hearing me? The last thing I want you to know is that growth is painful. Because you see, those are the three things the Lord dropped in my spirit. When you put a seed on the ground, hear me, and if you live with this, it's okay. When you put a seed on the ground, or in the ground, sorry, and you cover up that seed with soil, and you water it, and you go away, there is no appreciable noise that that seed makes that makes you see. For example, if it's a a seed of maize or corn, whichever you call it, there is no noise appreciably that that seed will make to make you, the farmer or the planter, know that it's about to grow. All you do is put the seed in the soil, cover it up, water it, and you walk away. In fact, if you stand there for the next two days watching that seed, there is nothing you can possibly do one, to speed up that process of growth. There is no information the seed can pass to you to make you believe that, farmer, I am growing. The only thing you do is expect that seed to grow in faith. Growth, many times, is very silent. Growth is very, very silent. Hear me. Inheritance in the kingdom, inheritance in the kingdom is not by assassination, it's by maturation. After you have killed all the witches in your family and silenced all the family altars, there are certain things that you cannot take possession of until you grow. So inheritance in the kingdom is not by assassination, it's by maturation. There are many things, in fact, the choicest things of God will demand that you grow into it. Are you with me tonight? And your growth many times would not be public service announcement. So you cannot, you cannot measure your growth by others taking notice of your growth. Am I, am I talking to you tonight? Your growth or the validation for your growth cannot be on the pedestal of others noticing that you are growing because many times your growth is silent when that seed is in the soil you look at the soil there's nothing that you see but you don't know that underneath in the crocs of the earth something is pulling out of that seed and it's called root before it comes up it must go down. There are many of you that you are looking at your life and it feels like nothing is growing. God sent me to tell you tonight that maybe you are in a season of your life where I'm giving you roots and not shoots. That you look on the outside and nothing is coming out. It does not mean that you are not growing. There are things that I'm demanding that you grow into. There are things that I need to put on you. But before I can trust your level of responsibility, I must drill depth in you. I am giving you root. I am solidifying your faith. I am increasing your prayer life. I am draining. I am drilling your word life. I am demanding that you grow in areas that eyes cannot see. Are you hearing me? God is demanding many times that you grow in areas that are not visible. Your bank account will not show your growth. Where you walk will not show your growth. Your choice of clothes will not show your growth. But something, God is deepening your roots. Because many of you, where he's taking you to, wants to take you to is very far. Somebody lift up your hand and say, I'm growing. Say it one more time like you say, I am growing. Say you may not see it. I may not look like it. But I'm growing. Something is changing in me. I'm growing. So God demands that many times you grow in areas that people cannot see. 
as a ministry, we have grown in areas that people cannot see. At a point, I said, you know what? Stop the Facebook live. I'm not competing with media visibility for anybody. I've lived with cameras all my life. So if I want to be visible, stop the Facebook live. Let us have internal structures before external glory or blossoming. And so we may not show every time our meetings or what's happening here or who walks in here. No, no, it's not necessary. We may be growing in areas that people cannot see. In your life, learn it. Learn to take it. That sometimes your growth will not be visible. Your growth will not mean that you can show your wedding ring and show who's your husband and show what you're driving. Your growth can be in your character. It can be in the endurance. It can be in patience. It can be God strengthening you in areas that are not immediately visible. The next thing I want you to know is that sometimes I said, growth is uncomfortable. Now watch this. We'll be out of here in a couple of minutes. I just want to say three things. Watch this. Do you remember, or not remember is not a good word. Do you know that when a woman is pregnant, what happens? The woman starts falling sick. Her body changes. She's spitting. She's nauseous. Sometimes fever. She loses appetite for certain food. All because new life is coming out of her. On the outside, they might diagnose malaria and give her some kind of, they call it a Sunday, Sunday medicine. They all kinds of things. She's slow. She looks like she's not well. But it's not actually that she's not well. She's betting something on the inside. On the outside, she looks very lethargic, very slow. Not her excited, usual self. But something is coming out of her. Many times, growth is uncomfortable. God will shift you and hit you in areas that make you uncomfortable. God will place a demand that sometimes you will not be all excited and speaking in tongues and dancing. Your growth will mean some sacrifices. Your growth will mean some lifestyle changes. Can I preach for a minute? Sometimes your growth will mean that certain people have to live your life. Your growth will mean that certain relationships come to an end. Sometimes your growth may mean certain heartbreaks. And certain people will be cut short from their association with you. Because where you are going, they cannot go with you. So growth is uncomfortable. Sometimes growth might mean that you, you, you put away certain attitudes for a while. And learn certain new things. Growth might mean you don't spend money the way you used to spend money before. Growth might mean you have some savings left aside, some susu. Growth might mean you, sometimes you are not very excited going away with friends. What's wrong with you? I don't feel like it. You are, what's happening? You, 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 you are now, you feel like an introvert. No, you don't understand. Certain things are changing in me. Where I'm going, you can't go with me. And growth, when, my mentor, when they call your phone and say, we are going out, you say, I cannot go out. Why? Yeah, these days you are... You are separating yourself too much. You don't understand. There are some things happening in my life that determine that I'm not my usual self. God will demand that the backside of the desert is your place of permanent residency for a while. But when you are in the backside of the desert, you may not know that Samuel is on his way to your house. My God, I will put your hands on it. I prophesy over 17 people. This is your season of growth. Pull out your 10 perks now. Look as far as your eyes can see. God sent me to tell you it's your new dawn. Some things are about to change change in your life uh, somebody shout uh, yes the last one and we'll pray growth is painful tell your neighbor it's painful growth is painful growth is painful why is it painful because many times there cannot be growth without debt a sept of grain of wheat fell to the ground, you abide alone. But if it dies, your growth will determine death. Death. Death in certain areas of your life. For the newness of life to spring forth. 
many times God will shut you in and require you to be reborn in many areas of your life. Do you realize that the Bible said in John that the Jews had come out to see Jesus, not on account of Jesus only, but on the account of Lazarus, who he raised from the dead. Can I, can I speak to you tonight? The Jews had come out in their numbers, not just to see Jesus, but to see Lazarus. PLC, you know I like to say it this way, that Jesus was the message. Lazarus was the evidence. They cannot fight the message. But what they can seek to stop is the evidence. What made Lazarus the evidence? It was not because he was a lover of Jesus only. It was because when they look at him, they say, this is Lazarus who died and came back to life after four days. His testimony of being an evidence was the fact that they can identify his death and his coming alive. Many times growth translates to death for you to be reborn. Growth translates to death for you to be reborn. Growth many times means the death of the flesh. Something has to leave your carnal self for your spirit to gain ascendancy. Many of us are too fleshy sometimes. Growth demands that something dies in your carnal self for your spirit to be made alive. Hear me people like Christ. Hear me. The trouble with many of us is that many times we fight what God is doing simply because we are not aware of it. Are you there? We fight what God is doing because what he's doing does not come into our human awareness. I have seen these three phases of growth in this ministry. I've seen these three phases of growth. In this ministry. We may not have died. Physically. Was a time in my life. When I said I was done. I'm done with this. But many times. You've been shut down. Buried. Assumed dead. Opens the door. To the next season. Of your life. Some people here are experiencing death in many areas of their life. You, you don't feel alive. Some dreams have died. Some hopes you have have died. Certain things that you carried, what excited your passion is dead. But God sent me to tell you that after tonight, something's are being reborn in your life. The gates to your new season is opening. I said the doors to your new season is opening. The gates to your new season is opening. People like Christ, hear me. I'm preaching for two minutes. Hear me. Hear me and hear God. I stand as the servant of God and the mouthpiece of God for my generation. I speak from the place of apostolic authority and I speak as the set man over this house. And I declare that because we have survived these three phases of growth, it it was painful it was uncomfortable many times it looked like dead the enemy left us for dead people spoke mocked laughed jeered and looked at us and said let's see how they can come back from this one but god sent me to tell you because the other day i heard micah say rejoice not over me my enemy for if i fall i will rise again you looked at me at my worst and you thought my worst was my end but may i make an announcement to you uh, that my God is bigger than your permutations uh, and your expectations of my life. Uh, where you think is my end uh, is my new beginning uh, because it's not over until it's over. I might be down today but I am rising again. Uh, I may look finished today uh, but God sent me to tell you uh, we've been endured uh, but for a night uh, but joy uh, is coming in the morning her for day that wait upon the lord shall renew 
their strength uh, we shall mount up with wings uh, as eagles uh, you shall run uh, and not go weary i see you rise uh, i see you run uh, i see you ride uh, on the wings of an eagle uh, the gates to your new season, the gates to your new dawn. Somebody step into it prophetically. It's your new dawn, it's your new season. What they said you couldn't do, what they thought they had stopped you. God sent me to tell you now. Look, look as far as your eyes can see, something is changing, something is shifting. Somebody shouted, Yes, yeah. Ha. Ha. Nothing is as painful as people mocking you for what God sent you to do that they cannot understand. Nothing is more painful than people gossiping when you're in the process. Your only crime is that you're doing what you think God sent you to do. My only crime is that I have this dream and I have this destiny. And, and I wish I could tell God I don't want this thing. I wish I could go back to living my life. But, but every time I say no, something within the bowels of my spirit tells me you are called for more. Uh, something keeps prompting me. Something keeps pushing me. I feel the preaching anointing now. Something keeps telling me that your life is made for more. Everybody wants to be average. Everybody wants to live ordinary. But something within the bowels of my spirit, uh, I shut my eyes and I see this dream. Huh? I shut my eyes and I see this vision of where God has taken me and I'm hated for it. But my only crime is that I just cannot remain where I am. My only crime is daring to believe that my life has more meaning than my present season. And I am hated for what my life is. It's painful. I wish I can explain to you what God told me. But if I try, you won't understand what God told me. I wish I could sit you down uh, and open your eyes to see what I saw uh, but when I try you can't see it uh, because God hasn't given it to you and I'm all alone many times uh, all I have in my head uh, is the voice of God saying I made you for more uh, there is more to your life don't give up uh, season after season I'm believing I'm trusting I'm holding on uh, but I can't show you the result because I'm still in my process working towards my promise Nothing is more painful than trying to explain what God told you that others didn't hear. Lift up your hands. Everyone here who's carrying a vision in your spirit, who's nursing a dream, something is happening now, Lord Jesus. Everyone here who's nursing a dream, it feels like a baby in your hands. <sighs> you wish you could explain to them what your life really means. What the essence of your life is. But no one will understand exactly. If you try to explain, they won't understand. I feel the anointing of God right now. Touching people. Some people, there's a dream in your spirit. There's something you've been trusting God for. You wish they would get you. They wish they would understand. But no one will know exactly what you're saying. So many times it's just you and God. Rocking your baby. Rocking your dream. Huh? And every time, watch them. Something is happening. Every time you try to give up. Huh? You know and say, destiny can't stop here. This thing can't die in my hands. Huh? This ministry can't die in my hands. This gifting can't die in my hands. There is something I'm made for. A generation is waiting to hear my voice. There is something I'm carrying. I feel fire all over this place. Ah. 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 I just heard in my spirit. I don't know what that means. It's for somebody. I just heard in my spirit. Don't kill my baby. 
Uh, maybe that's a sermon title. I'll preach that one. Don't kill my baby. Don't kill my baby. It's not just, I know I'm hiding this baby like Moses for three months, but I'm hiding this baby because I know that it may look ordinary. He's not just an ordinary Hebrew boy. This one is sent as a deliverer. Don't kill my baby. Don't kill my dreams. Some mothers have killed dreams. Some fathers have killed dreams. Some friends have killed dreams. I'm, I'm nursing this ministry. I know you've never heard me hold the microphone but there is something in my spirit that says my voice is meant for nations i am watching over my baby i will not let this baby die destiny cannot stop here i see two people right now fire is coming upon your right hand because you are saying that destiny cannot stop here ushers watch them in the next 17 seconds i see fire touch two people Worship with us every Sunday at People Like Christ Ministries. God has a word for you.